So when I think about when I think about what my audience is is thinking, feeling, and doing, feeling, thinking, and doing right now, and then think about what the opposite of those things are. What the goal on a long term basis is to understand and embrace the concept of mindfulness. Uh, that includes basically being able to be in the moment, be still, be quiet, right? Listen for your intuition. But the rub is, is that in, that involves also embodying the whole concept of allowing things and just being, just be and allow. Now, in the state that some people are in, I was in a state where the concept of just allowing and just being was unfathomable almost because my response to that would be, you want me to just allow more horrible shit to happen because my life is a is a dumpster fire, right? It's just you're in that, it's all jacked up, man. Can't think straight, drinking too much or whatever the case may be. I'm, you know, stressed, anxiety, money, you know, Supporting maybe my uh, marriage or relationship is falling apart. So allowing and being is a foreign concept. It's like what, right? So that so it takes it takes effort. It's a it's a practice. It's like school, but it's Earth school. It's a practice that we continue to embrace on a daily basis and allow this mindfulness even if it's for 10 minutes. And the idea is to get stronger and stronger in your ability to allow yourself to be just in the moment. Now, well, here's the other rub. There's several, this is not easy, but it's simple. The other rub is, is that when we get still and quiet in the midst of chaos, then the voices that we hear and that are really loud are the ones that are more along the lines of, you know, imposter syndrome. Who do you think you are that you think you could actually, you know, get your shit together, right? Um, you're not good enough. You're not worthy. You're failing, you know? So we used to call the radio station KFUK because it's so loud. Well, what we, what we do over time is we turn down the volume of that radio station. And we replace it with the whispers that we start to hear, which is our intuition telling us what is the next right thing to do. So in order to do it, we have to just do it. So we have to begin that. But there are certain things that like, you know, I mean, if we, if we look, I'll give you an example. Let's say we're drinking too much. We're thinking about stopping drinking, but we're not stopping and we're just continuing to do it. And so we don't have very much clarity because we use the alcohol to kind of numb out whatever's going on. If, you know, that's one example, maybe we're thinking about changing our diet and being more mindful of the things that we're putting in our body. And we're actually even thinking about exercising too. Well, here's the rub. Okay. To be able to be in the moment and allow things to just be the way they are, we have to have a healthy sense of self-esteem. Because if we're just sitting allowing things, but we're not changing anything, we're not developing new habits, we're not actually moving in the direction that will enable us to allow and be in that state and in that, in that moment, we have to do some different things. So we have to take care of ourselves. Right? We have to move our body instead of just letting it sit and atrophy because that's what happens to our muscles and our bones and our body and everything else. Not to mention all the benefits of exercise, of oxytocin and all the good stuff. So we have to move. This is just some examples. So we have to move our body, exercise, let's say three days a week. And if you haven't done it at all and you're really jacked and you, you know, not jacked in a good way, but screwed up and you need to lose some weight and your body's just full of toxins, you know what? Here's a good way to start. Tell yourself you're gonna do one push-up in the morning, and one jumping jack, and then do it every single morning. You're showing up, you're developing that muscle 
that allows you, uh, pun intended, to that allows you to actually, you know, start feeling better. And when we're not putting just completely ridiculously bad things in our body, which is a lot of processed food or whatever, you know, we're just mindful. We start being mindful of what we're putting in our body. It's all part. It's all connected, right? So we're exercising. We're starting to pay attention to what we put in our body. And by getting quiet and still and practicing mindfulness and begin to start allowing the process of things to unfold the way they're going to, if we're doing the next right thing, we start to, maybe our relationship starts getting better by default. Maybe that needs some special attention. Maybe we need to look at ourselves in that regard and say, hey, um, what part am I playing in this problem that I'm perceiving that I have? And maybe it's a real problem. I mean, let me tell you something. <laughs> Here's what not to do. Your relationship starts falling apart. You guys are getting more distant, uh, less frequent sex. I mean, there's all kinds of signs. But let me tell you something. If you're numbing out the fact that maybe you just lost your business twice and you're just numbing it out because you feel like a victim and you're not ready to take responsibility for your life and so you're drinking too much, you're not even present. You can't even be present to the fact that your relationship is falling apart and she might file for divorce soon. These are all real things. So it's a process. It's not an overnight thing. And we choose to go on the journey. We are on the journey anyway. We're all heroes, but we have to see ourselves and understand that we are, and then look at where we are in the moment. Right in the moment, right now, right here, right now, where are we, right? Take inventory of everything that's going on in your life and realize that we are the common denominator in all of our problems. So once we step out of the blame zone and we stop blaming other people and pointing the finger, then maybe once we acknowledge and, and are aware of our involvement and our participation and possibly even our design and construction of our mess, right? Once we take responsibility for that, then we have an opportunity to change it because that's called pausing. We pause when we're agitated or doubtful. We don't know what to do. And then we listen for our intuition. And guess what? It's right there. Oh, this is the best thing. It's the best course of action. Because I can't blame anyone else anymore. I'm actually taking responsibility for everything in my life. So this is the path. This is the hero maker method. This is what we do. We take responsibility and we start making changes. It's pretty simple but not easy. So if you're willing to go on the journey, I welcome you. And I'm very excited to have you.